Good evening. I'm Nancy Panter, Chair of East Grampians Health Service. I'd like to declare the 25th Annual General Meeting of East Grampians Health Service open. East Grampians Health Service proudly acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands in which everyone is meeting on and pay respects to all elders past, present and future of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander communities across the nation. To everyone who has joined us this evening via Zoom webinar, webinar welcome. I'd now like to invite East Grampians Health Service Chief Executive Andrew Freeman to advise notice of meeting, notice of business received, minutes of previous annual general meeting. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, the notice of the meeting was placed in the Ararat Advertiser and Ararat Advocate on the 27th of November, the 4th of December and the 11th of December in accordance with the Health Services Act uh, 1988. Um, there was no notice of business received. And the minutes of the 24th Annual General Meeting held on the 26th of November were confirmed at the meeting of the board conducted on the 17th of December 2019. Before I hand over to the board chair to present the annual report, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the staff at East Grampians Health Service for their commitment in what has been a very challenging year. Your professionalism and dedication to East Grampians Health Service is clear and very much appreciated. I also want to recognise the many volunteers who support the health service your contrib contribution is invaluable. We look forward to welcoming you back in the new year as COVID restrictions ease. Congratulations to everyone that is receiving a certificate or award tonight. And lastly, I'd like to recognise the work of Joe Summers who puts an enormous amount of time in to making the AGM a successful evening. I now ask that Nancy Panter, board chair to present the 2019-20 annual report. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Good evening and thank you for joining us here tonight. I'd like to welcome you to the 25th East Grampians Health Service Annual General Meeting. This year's annual, annual general meeting is very different. The annual general meeting is an important date on the board's calendar, as it's the major way in which we can thank our staff, volunteers, visiting medical officers and our community for their support and efforts over the year. It's also a night of celebration as we report on another successful year and present to you some of our organisational highlights and significant events. Tonight, I base the chair's report on information contained in the printed annual report prepared in accordance with statutory and government requirements and available on our website with additional copies available from the executive officers on request. As a report, it contains mostly mandated information from the government. At the commencement of this financial year, no one could have predicted how circumstances would evolve that have created a global pandemic, which has had an impact on every country and every community worldwide. The coronavirus has significantly changed the way we live our lives. We're grateful to all our staff for the way they have addressed all aspects of management of COVID-19, from the outstanding care of patients, residents and clients to exemplary cleaning maintenance, uh, cleaning maintenance that followed the government edicts for sanitation of facilities. It's this attention to detail that has ensured our consumers are safe. The pandemic has brought out the best in our staff, displaying commitment to the health and wellbeing of our community through looking out for each other and coming up with innovative ideas. We've also seen wonderful displays of community generosity and kindness to our staff and residents. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow board members for their support over the last 12 months. Four new board members were appointed in 2020, Sybil Abbott Burmeister, Peter Wig, Susan Craven, and Kim Peter. Their experience is broad, and we look forward to their input and uh, the input of the strategic direction of our organisation. 
The 2019-2022 strategic plan is our key strategic document. The three strategic goals of better health, better access and better care address the challenges faced by our health service and are based on the priorities detailed in the Victorian government document, Health 2040, Advancing Health, Access and Care. The strategic plan implementation framework ensures our strategic plan remains dynamic, meaningful and achievable with defined and measurable actions for our staff and the board. The board set a statement of priorities in agreement with the Department of Health and Human Services. The statement of priorities is consistent with the health service plans and objectives. As an organisation, we have identified strategies and put in place deliverables to ensure that we are meeting these priorities. The outcomes of the statement of priorities are highlighted in the annual report. We completed the Community Health Centre redevelopment towards the end of 2019. The centre now provides an inviting space with more consulting rooms, parking, greater privacy and greater opportunities for seamless multidisciplinary healthcare for clients. The co-location of maternal child health nurses has resulted in increasing referrals for children for dental, physiotherapy and speech services. The number of visiting health professionals and specialists has increased and the larger waiting room can cater for up to 20 clients with appropriate social distancing measures. The Art Toy and Activity Library has also relocated to this family friendly space. We received $6.8 million in funding to redevelop the theatre complex, including imagery and pathology. The funding announcement was timely as our collaborative approach with Ballarat Health Service has seen an increase in patient throughput. While COVID-19 has delayed some works, we've been able to progress this project with the engagement of architects and the finalisation of tender documents. I'm pleased to advise that we've appointed Nicholas Construction as our commercial builder for this important project. The board is mindful that one of the biggest challenges of our health, ser our health service faces is sustainable workforce that is knowledgeable, flexible and appropriately qualified to accommodate the health service needs of our diverse community now and into the future. One of our pivotal core values is the provision of a learning culture achieved through training, education and mentoring. We know how important it is to provide opportunities for career pathways that offer both professional and personal fulfillment and where commitment to learning is acknowledged. Our aim is to educate and encourage students to continue their relationship with the health service in order to secure a sustainable workforce into the future. This year, the D Diploma of Nursing was delivered in partnership with Federation University Ballarat. COVID created some unique challenges, but we look forward to continuing this program into the future. Through growing our own, we're confident that we're providing career pathways that present opportunities for further training, leadership and fulfilment. A strategic decision was made by the board to appoint a full-time doctor in 2020. After a great deal of planning and advocacy with state and federal government, we made an appointment in 2020 through the Victorian Rural Generalist Pathway Program. The appointment of Dr. Dan Wilson has been extremely successful and we would like to thank Dr. Michael Conlon for his support in supervising Dan. It's thanks to the generosity of a number of philanthropic trusts and bursaries that the board has been able to award scholarships to staff to enable them to upskill in their chosen field. Without this level of financial support, it would be more challenging for staff to undertake further studies that continue to assist in the health and wellbeing of our community. On behalf of the board, I wish to acknowledge the Angela Laidlaw Clinical Scholarship, Building for the Future Foundation, Epworth Health and the Epworth Health Centre. This year, we have an additional bursary made possible through the generous bequest of Mr. Joseph Capp. I'd like to acknowledge David Hosking, Chair of the East Grampians Health Service Building for the Future Foundation. David oversees the management of the foundation the foundation supports the aims of the health service by raising and allocating funds to invest in its future. 
Since its inception, the foundation has allocated 27 bursaries to help staff upskill to provide extended capacity to the organisation. Workforce shortages will remain a challenge for us, but focusing on key areas, we have been able to support staff in their commitment to upgrade their qualifications. We're committed to ensuring we're providing safe services in our community. In the past year, East Grampians Health Service was accredited against the, the new second edition National Safety and Quality Health Service Standards. Garden View Court, one of our residential aged care facilities, was accredited against the new aged care quality standards and all other residential aged care facilities met ongoing requirements for continued accreditation. During the accreditation process, the surveyors highlighted the care, compassion and empathy of all staff. And this reflects the ongoing commitment of our staff to our organisational values. In providing the very best care to our, to our consumers, we're supported by our volunteers, auxiliary members and financial donors. Without them, we as a health service could not provide some of the additional facilities for our patients and our residents. With over 150 volunteers, five auxiliaries and many external service groups who make a significant contribution to help us achieve our goals. The contribution by so many is greatly appreciated. COVID has impacted on the work they could do this year but we look forward to welcoming them back soon. Throughout these difficult times, our staff, auxiliaries and volunteers have supported each other through fun activities while raising funds for our health service. Fundraising activities this year included the 18th East Grampians Health Service Charity Golf Day and Fun Run, the 17th WWW Dinner, and whilst fundraising for the Murray to Moyne Cycle Relay did take place, unfortunately the ride could not proceed due to COVID, with all funds rolling over to next year. Last year, the Blue Ribbon Foundation, Ararat Branch, made the commitment to support the purchase of a replacement X-ray machine that will cost approximately $230,000. The Ararat Branch has presented two instalments, totaling $120,000 towards this vital equipment. Thank you to the Blue Ribbon Foundation Ararat Branch for your ongoing support. Sincere thanks to the following auxiliaries and service clubs that have supported us in their fundraising activities. Wallora Healthcare Auxiliary, Murray to Moyne Bike Riders, Cranks and Defibrillators, Victoria Police Blue Ribbon Foundation Ararat Branch, Ararat Breast Cancer Support Group, East Grampians Health Service Building for the Future Foundation, East Grampians Health Service Auxiliary, East Grampians Health Service Resident Support Group, East Grampians Health Service Charity Golf Day and Fun Run, East Grampians Health Service Arc Toy and Activity Library Auxiliary, Freemasons Victoria, United Ararat Lodge, Social Club and Freemasons, Bevalent Fund, Ararat Community Assist, East Grampians Health Service Past Trainees Association and Ararat Rockers. On behalf of the board, we'd like to thank the executive, staff, visiting medical officers and volunteers for your commitment to care, continuous improvement and dedication to serving the needs of our community. We congratulate you and express our deep appreciation. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you for attending this evening and continuing to show a passion for your local health service. I'd like to move the report is, as circulated be adopted and call for someone to second. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I'd like to now invite our treasurer, Danielle Walker, to provide the treasurer's report. Thank you, Nancy. Good evening all, my name is Danny Walker and I'm the board treasurer for the East Grampians Health Service. Thank you for the opportunity to deliver the financial report for the year for the financial year 1920 for the health service. The reports presented have been reviewed by the East Grampians Health Services Board 
on the 5th of October 2020, and the Victoria Auditors General's Office have delivered their audit opinion. This opinion stated that the financial report for the East Grampians Health Service presents fairly in all material aspects the financial position of the health service as at the 30th of June 2020. The financial, their financial performance and cash flows for the year in accordance with the financial reporting requirements of part seven of Financial Management Act 1994 and applicable accounting standards. The audited results are detailed in our annual financial report booklet for further reference. The result for the year included East Grampians Health Service posting an operating surplus of 293,000 for the financial year ended June 2020. This represents a 0.6% surplus on our operating budget for the year. This financial result, however, whilst positive, belies an exceptionally challenging year for the health service. Coming from a deficit position last year, East Grampians Health Service commenced this year with another deficit operating budget and a number of mitigating strategies supported by the Department of Health and Human Services. Prior to COVID-19 impacting operations, East Grampians Health Service had a strong service delivery and was reporting above target activity. From February onwards, restrictions on elective surgery was a significant drop, meant a significant drop in acute activity. This was accompanied by a reduction in associated expenditure in the first instance, but also gave rise to new expenditure due to the pandemic. In response to the pandemic, the Department of Health and Human Services went further in their support of the health service by reviewing the funding guidelines and delivering specific COVID grants. This enabled East Grampians Health Service to deliver restricted services for the remainder of the year and maintain its workforce. This funding also meant delivery of some COVID related services, such as testing and also providing funding for additional cleaning and PPE to deliver our services in a COVID safe manner. Ultimately, as a result of the Department of Health and Human Services support and reduced net expenditure, East Grampians Health Service were able to achieve this surplus. The difficult financial times are forecast to continue in the short to medium term as a result of COVID and other pressures. The board has sought and received the guarantee from the Department of Health and Human Services that it will fund any shortfalls in cash over the next 12 month period. The board and executive will continue to look at revenue generation and appropriate cost savings into the future. We will work in partnership with the Department of Health and Human Services to balance the budget through growth and the versatility of program delivery. East Grampians Health Service continues to plan for the future with its ongoing capital development and investment in staff development. We continue our program of capital replacement and renewal this year with a $2.8 million of new additional assets. This was made up of items of plant and equipment and building redevelopment. Work has commenced on the major redevelopment of the theatre and radiology areas, which will occur over the next two years. This shows our continued commitment to expanding, modernising modernizing and responding to local and regional demand. These major projects have been funded predominantly by the Department of Health and Human Services through their capital division. Support has also been received from the Blue Ribbon Foundation, donations and bequests. I would like to stress that any fundraising donations and bequests received from the community are separately accounted for and do not go to fund operating deficits. They are used for capital projects that have an enduring benefit for the community or in specific alignment with the wishes of the donor. We sincerely and humbly thank all of those who have donated or who have been involved in fundraising efforts. It's through these efforts that we continue to be a leading service provider to our local community. Finally, I would like to highlight the ongoing commitment to staff development at East Grampians Health Service. The health services sees the support of staff through training and development as crucial to ensuring the success of the service into the future. 
Whilst this can take various forms, we would especially like to thank the generous support of the Building for the Future Foundation and the effort and the Epworth Foundation for their bursary program. I would now like to recommend the adoption of the finance report to the meeting. Thank you. And now I'd like to move for adoption of the financial report and call for a seconder. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And I'll hand over to Paul. Thank you, Danny. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Peter Pretorius and Mr. Michael Tui for the contribution to the East Grampians Health Service. Dr. Peter Pretorius has contributed 15 years service and 10 years service to Mr. Michael Tui. Our visiting medical staff continue to play a vital role in providing the services we deliver to our community. And once again, thank you for your contribution. I'd like to hand over to David Hoskin. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I'm just here to announce uh, some bursaries. First off, we have the uh, Epworth Healthcare Bursary. Epworth Healthcare has very generously made available a bursary of $20,000. East Grampians Health Service is grateful for the support of the Epworth Healthcare who assist us to recruit and train midwives. This support enables the midwives to keep up to date with the skills and knowledge essential for East Grampians Health Service to provide a maternity delivery service. Funds this year will also support our new midwifery graduate nurse, Laura Mackay, to transition to work and attend extra training at Ballarat Health Services in 2021. I'd just like to announce the uh, Building for the Future Foundation bursaries. Workforce is the most crucial elephant, elephant, no. Workforce is the most crucial element in offering services. And at the foundation, we're proud of our support of the East Grampians Health Services strategic objective of developing a rural centre of excellence for obstetrics and these bursaries support this. The East Grampians Health Services Building for the Future Foundation is pleased to be able to offer two bursaries up to the value of $15,000 each to staff to ensure improvement in the long-term viability and sustainability of the health service. It gives me much pleasure to announce that this year's recipients of the $15,000 Building for the Future Foundation bursaries are Claire Sladden, who will undertake a Masters in Health and Hayley Lennon, who will undertake a Masters in Sonography. Congratulations to Claire and Hayley. Uh, finally, the East Grampians Health Service Building for the Future Foundation is pleased to be able to offer a new bursary up to the value of $15,000 in the name of Joe Cap. I'd like to acknowledge both Joe and Monica Cap for their general, generous contribution. It gives me much pleasure to announce the recipients of the Building for the Future Foundation Joe Cap bursary. First one is Jodie Sutherland, who will undertake an associated degree of vocational education and training. Amanda Kumnick, who will undertake an advanced leader program. And Grace Andrews, who will undertake a postgraduate certificate in hand therapy. I'll hand back over to Nancy. Thank you, David. I would now like to invite Andrew to provide some background to the Angela Laidlaw Clinical Scholarship. Thanks, Nancy. The Angela Laidlaw Clinical Scholarship is donated by the Laidlaw family in memory of Angela, whose love and commitment to the health service inspired Angie's family to commemorate her in this way. Staff working in clinical areas across East Grampians Health Service are eligible to apply. The intent of the scholarship is to generate benefits for East Grampians Health Service and individual staff who are linked to Angela's name and memory thereby ensuring that Angela's contribution to East Grampians Health Service and the community continues into the foreseeable future. I'd like now to ask David to announce the winner. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, this year, the Laidlaw family are very pleased to be partnered with East Grampians Health Service to award the Clinical Scholarship in memory of Angela. The scholarship is designed to assist members of staff with further, edu further education and training and supports East Grampians Health Services strategy of helping staff to develop. It gives me much pleasure to announce this year's recipient, the Angela Laidlaw Clinical Scholarship is Tiffany Barrow, who will complete a postgraduate diploma in perioperative nursing. Congratulations, Tiffany. I'll now hand back to Andrew. 
Thank you, David. Uh, the board and executive would like to pay tribute to the following people who have been part of East Grampians Health Service and sadly passed away during the year. We were saddened by the death of Life Governor Kiva Turner, who was a long time Ararat Red Cross unit member and was appointed a Life Governor to the Health Service in 1999. Kiva was almost also a much loved resident at Parkland House at Wallora. Next, I'd like to acknowledge Lauren Owen. Lauren was a much loved member of our aged care team who would have received her 20 years of service certificate this year. Staff and residents at 70 Low Street miss her dearly. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge Lynette Davis. Lynn worked as a catering assistant at East Grampians Health Service for over 10 years, and she'll be sadly missed by all staff and residents. Now I'd like to hand back over to Nancy, who will um, acknowledge the graduate nurses. Thank you, Andrew. The Graduate Nurse Program is, re is recent graduates of the nursing degree who are supported in their first year of practice. I'd like, to, I'd like to invite Paul Hooper to acknowledge the names of the students from the Graduate Nursing Program. Thank you, Nancy. The students from the Graduate Nursing Program in 2020 were Laura Labans, Taylor Moonsey, Tamara James, Grace Stretton Smith, Xavier Gibbons, Meg Walker, Jessica Baird, and Kirby Connolly. I congratulate those and hand back to Nancy. Thank you, Paul. Long service awards. Our staff are integral to the success of East Grampians Health Service and we are indebted to staff who have contributed to the life of the health service over the periods ranging from 10 years to 40 years. 10 years service, Peter Thompson, Caroline Smith, Claire Sladden, Sladden Jan Marie Ruddle, Sarah Power, Tricia Maddox, Michael Kelly, Beth Hutchinson, Kim Hartwich, Annette Evans, Cassandra Drenwick, Judy Debney, and Susanna Christie. 15 years service, Jennifer Sargent, Olga Carrier, Marie Fraser, Margaret Driscoll, Leanne Colt, Gillian Cohenberg, and Susan Chandler. 20 years service, Danielle Wheeler, Pamela Pevett, Fiona Miller, Carolyn Hamilton, and Christine Brody. 25 years service, Janine McElroy, Tracy Hull, and Anne Grierson. 30 years service, Blair Kilpatrick, Yvonne Grigg, and Julie Frawley. 35 years service, Megan Taylor. 40 years service, Joe Oakley. A tremendous achievement. Now, our organisation is what it is because of those that work and volunteer for East Grampians Health Service, and, and those are extraordinary, extraordinary long service awards. So, congratulations and thank you very much. Education and training is crucial to the success of the health service. And we are indebted to the staff who have, our staff who have undertaken further education at both Ararat and Willora to ensure our community receives the highest standard of care. I'd now like to invite Mario to read out the names of Achievement Award recipients. Thank you, Nancy. Achievement Award recipients are Amanda Cranston for Certificate Acute Nursing Care Emergency, Michael Hermasilla, Certificate Acute Nursing Care, Amy Thacker, Bachelor of Nursing, uh, Brody Taylor, uh, Bachelor of Nursing Paramedics, Fiona Murphy, Certificate for Sterilisation Services, Angela Graham, Certificate for Sterilisation Services, Leanne Colf, Certificate for Sterilisation Services, Amy Hinchcliffe, Rural and Isolated Practice Endorsed Registered Nurse, and Brooke Curry, Bachelor of Commerce. It's wonderful to see the board and community lead uh, lead promotion of uh, education resulting in staff increasing their skills, such as the Diploma of Nursing, 
Angel, Angela Laisal Law Clinical Scholarship and the Building for Future Foundation Bursary Recipient Graduate. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Mario. I'd like to thank everybody for attending our meeting this evening and your interest in the East Grampians Health Service. I'd now like to declare our annual general meeting closed.